Hi, I'm Cole. Welcome back to Raised Right Fishing. Today we're going to be covering this guy, the Texas rig. So why don't you come along and stay tuned. I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back. So as I said today, we're going to go over uh, the Texas rig. Uh, this is really one of my favorite rigs. It's easy to fish, easy to learn, uh, and it can work in dang near any situation. Um, so if you've been following us along uh, with our other videos, um, uh, we've covered hook sizes, hook types, uh, knots that you're going to need to know, and then uh, we've also covered how to uh, spool your new reel with line. Um, so really the only thing you need to learn is how to put a lure on and how to fish it and uh, this is going to be the first video covering that uh, so to get into it uh, I'm going to show you what you're going to need and what I'm going to use uh, so depending on what you're fishing is going to depend on what you're going to use uh, I'm talking about worm sizes, uh, hook sizes, hook types, stuff like that Today I am going to be using a, uh, a six inch uh, Young Beamer, uh, Young Dinger uh, black and blue worm. Uh, this is it out of the packaging. I'm going to be using an eighth ounce, eighth ounce, yep, uh, one eighth ounce uh, finesse weight from Wu Tungsten. Uh, these tungsten weights are awesome. They allow you to feel anything and everything on the bottom of the. Um, the water source you're fishing and so you know how to fish it a little better you know what you're working with um, and then lastly I'm going to be using a 5 aught hook from Eagle Claw okay and then this is also going to be an offset uh, worm hook um, you look right up here I'm going to link the uh, video where Derek talks about hook sizes and hook types so you can um, decide what's best for you since I'm using a uh, a six inch worm, the five aught hook size is going to be the best option for me. If you're using a smaller worm, you might need to go with a four aught or three aught, uh, depending on the worm you're using. So that's what I'm going to need for today. Uh, let me reposition the camera and we'll get back into uh, rigging up that worm. Hold on. All right, so here we go. I got everything laid out that I need. Once again, I got my weight. Got my hook, got my worm, and then most importantly, you're going to need your line. Put all that stuff on. So, oh, one thing I did forget. You don't absolutely need it for this kind of a rig, but uh, I like to use them to keep my weight in place. Okay. I almost forgot the most important part here. All right, it's called a bobber stop. Okay, I'll show it to you in a second. Let me get this thing shut. All right, this right here, called a bobber stop. Okay, obviously they're meant to be used for bobbers, but you can use them with different types of rigs. Like today, I'm going to use it for a. Uh, uh, Texas rig and I'm going to show you how it's used to keep the weight in place um, once again like I said you don't need it um, I'll show you what happens when you don't put it on and then uh, and then I'll show you why I use it okay so so once again now I have everything I need got my weight worm hook bobber stop that I almost forgot all right so the very first thing you're going to do is put that on and that's uh that's why I remembered it because that's the first thing and if I didn't have it on it wouldn't work properly alright so you got your bobber stop with the loop in top there and you got your line now what you're gonna do is you're gonna thread your line through that loop up top there just like that okay and then you're gonna grab your line don't pinch it but fold it together like that so it makes one strand, okay, and then you take the bobber stop like this, 
you're just going to slide it off onto that double line. Now, obviously, that double line is not going anywhere, so you're going to slide it all the way down until it hits the single line. Alright, just like that. Okay, now that bobber stop is off of there. It's on my line. Okay, so I'm going to pull that down so I have enough line to work with for everything else. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the weight on the line. Okay, so with the weight, there's going to be a pointy end and there's going to be a fat end uh, with these finesse weights. You're going to put the pointy end on first and if you just look at the weight you're going to feed it right through this hole here okay feed it on just like that run it all the way down all right so now we got the weight and the bobber stop on now i'm going to tie the hook okay so if you look right here uh i'm going to link the video to um derek's video of uh, the three different types of knots. I'm going to be tying the my knot because that's what I learned, uh, grew up learning, and I haven't lost a hook on it like ever, unless I've had to cut the line myself. Okay, so you can kind of watch what I'm doing here, or if you go to that video in the link um, and then look in the description. You can actually jump to the uh, part of the video that just covers the, the my knot, which is the knot I'm doing here, or you can watch the whole video and learn your different types of knots. Okay. Cut the tail off. Okay, so now. I got the bobber stop, I got the weight, and I got the hook, okay? Now that the hook's on, I can kind of move the other stuff back down. Don't move it all the way down yet because you still might need some room for your um, for your worm. All right, so the actual rig. So now you got your bobber stop, the weight, and the hook. The only thing you absolutely need with the Texas rig is the hook. You don't need the weight or the bobber stop, um, and you know you don't even need the bobber stop. So if you don't have, so if you have the bobber stop, it holds the weight in place right there, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's 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 easier to keep it unstuck from lodging into rocks or um, sticks or logs or anything like that. Um, and then it it provides a certain action to the worm. If you take the bobber stop off, okay, I'm just going to move it up to simulate that it's off. You see that the, the weight moves freely on the line, which, you know, just provides a different action. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but so what's going to happen is the, the weight is going to come down, it's going to hit the floor, and then you're going to pull the worm through, okay? So it's just, so it's free like that. And sometimes you have a light worm, it might stay up here and float a little bit while the, um, the weight is sitting on the floor, and then you just pull it through. It's just a different action. Okay, and then if you have the bobber stop on the weight, it doesn't go anywhere, the weight's going to hit, okay, and then the worm and the hook are just going to be sitting straight up, kind of like that, okay, or kind of off to the side. All right. Anyway, those are the benefits of either having a bobber stop or not having a bobber stop. Now we're going to get into rigging the actual worm for the Texas rig. Now on these young dingers, you can see the slit right here on um, one side of the worm. We're going to try to rig it so that the hook comes up through that slit. Okay, that just helps it um, stay covered and keeps it even more weedless. So first thing you're going to do when rigging a Texas rig, uh, if you do have a young dinger worm or any other worm with a slit in it like that, you're going to want that slit pointed away from the hook. Okay. And you're going to bring the hook or you're going to bring the uh, the worm up to it just like this and you're going to poke the hook through the top of the worm okay just like that now don't go too far only go until uh, that top of the worm starts to hit the curve in the hook and you're going to pull it back out okay so only that much of the worm is in the hook. 
Okay, and you're going to thread it all the way up to this offset here. Okay, now when you get to the offset, when you get to the offset part of the hook, you're going to feed it up through the offset and twist the worm at the same time. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of like that. So now your worm is completely above the offset and still only in there just a little bit. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the hook through the worm so it looks something like that. And the easiest way to do that, uh, if you put it in too shallow or you put it in uh, too deep, you might have the, the, the hook end up coming through the worm like this. You might have a bent worm, you know, either way you do it, it might end up looking like that. Uh, so the easiest way to do it is to, to line the worm up with the hook before putting it in and kind of see where the hook is going to go into the worm. And it looks like it's going to go about halfway through that smooth part. So I'm going to bend the worm in a little bit. Now I'm going to insert the hook into that part. And as the hook is coming through, I'm going to straighten the worm back out. Because I want the hook to come out, not straight out of the worm. Okay, I don't want it coming out looking like that, but I want it coming out flush with the worm. Okay, so what this is going to do now is now you got a straight worm on a hook. Now the hook looks buried, but that's okay. So what's going to happen is it's going to be weedless, it's not going to catch any weeds, but when a fish comes in, to bite it, it exposes the hook, just like that. Okay, I'm going to bring the bobber stop and the weight back down. There you go. You got your text rig. All right. Now that I showed you how to rig this butte, I'm going to grab my stuff. I'm going to head out to the lake, and I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to fish it. I'm going to fish for a bit, see if we can't catch anything. And uh, then I'll come back here and uh, do the review and conclusion. All right, so stand by. All right, welcome back. All right, we're out here with the black and blue Texas rig we rigged up at the house. We're going to see if we can have a little fun and catch some fish. So when you're fishing the Texas rig, you're going to want to throw it out there. Uh, let it sit. Let it sink all the way to the bottom. You're going to bring it up, reel in the slack bring it up reel on the slack essentially you just want it you know bouncing up and down on the ground all right so we're gonna make a couple casts here and kind of show you how I do it and then I'm gonna just work my way around this bank cut you to the GoPro image and we're gonna see if we can have some luck all right that tungsten weight I can feel that I'm hitting some rocks on the bottom there just kind of rolling it across the bottom of those rocks nice and slow trying to make a little bit of noise see if we can get a a fish mad get a reaction strike The Texas rig is a slow, slower bait to to work, so it takes a little more time to get it back to you. you might not be able to tell from that view, but if if you see the GoPro view, um, you can see I'm standing a bit off the shore. Uh, that's because I don't want to walk right up to the edge of the shore um, to throw my first few casts because the vibrations of my feet will actually uh, alert the fish that I'm there if they're right next to the edge and they'll, uh, they'll go away pretty quick. So I try to cast out to where I'm going to stand uh, the first few times, um, see if I can catch one right next to the shore without spooking it.
bouncing it over those rocks. For some reason you come up on a structure that it's not going to come over really easily, just leave it to a slack line and just give it a pop. Okay, just pop it. It'll jump right over whatever it is down there. So, so just working it slow like this. All right. You get the gist of it. I'm going to cut you off and turn on my GoPro camera. We're going to fish this bank, see if we can have some fun. All right, stay tuned. So, as you can tell from the video, uh, I didn't have much luck, um, just kind of the perils of fishing. Uh, sometimes you catch them, sometimes you don't, um, but I was able to be out there, enjoy some peace and quiet, uh, you know, enjoy being outdoors. Um, sometimes we get hung up on whether we catch a fish or not, uh, and it gets a little stressful. Uh, but sometimes you just got to take a step back, relax, and just know, you know, actually what's going on out there. And you're just, you're just enjoying yourself. You're enjoying your time out there. So it's too bad I didn't catch anything. But like I said, you know, it was awesome being out there. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit from the video. Um, hopefully you're ready to, to, you know, rig up that Texas rig and then uh, head out there and do a little fishing of your own. Uh, if you do, you know. Go ahead and throw a video on our Facebook page, um, or I am us and Instagram will feature you. Uh, you can find the links to those in the comments below, or in the uh, the section below the video. Uh, we also have a Twitter. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more that's uh, that's coming out from us in the weeks to come, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, if you want to know when we post each video, uh, hit that little bell button for notifications and you'll be notified as soon as we put a new video up. Uh, I want to thank our military and first responders as always. Um, you guys are great. Uh, we love what you do. Keep it up. Uh, 
I want to say thank you to uh, uh, Hook 360. Um, this is Hook 360. Got their shirt on here. Uh, they make some awesome gear. Check them out. Go online www.hook360.com. We'll put that link in the description below. Um, they're brand new. Uh, all of their proceeds, they take them and they take a portion and send it off to a uh, uh, conservation fund to help fund uh, wildlife conservation. And they just do some great work with that stuff. Uh, they have performance gear. They got um, reusable straws, which is the you know the new fad coming out right now. Uh, they got tumblers, um, men's and women's clothes. Uh, so just check them out. They're really a great company. Um, hopefully you like the video and uh, let us know in the comments below if you have anything to add or if you have any questions. Thank you, Ken. Raise Rock Fishing.